Welcome to the Two Blokes Chatting Radio Show on 94.7 The Pulse. Music, interviews, news and, well, two blokes chatting. Now, here are the two blokes. Good morning, Buck. Oh, there he is. He is there somewhere hiding away. Yeah, good to have you aboard, mate. Uh, Thanks very much for your time again. You've always been very available and we appreciate that. Uh, No footy last season for, for someone without being disrespectful to your age and you're, you're wanting to get as much out of your footy life to miss a whole season must have been really personally quite difficult. Yeah, it was. I'm only 30, mate, so I'm not, uh, not that old. Yeah, but it's got a three in front of it, mate. It won't be long. Yeah, it's, it's starting to get there. It's starting to feel um, feel like the end is near. But, yeah, it was hard. And it's, it's hard to sort of go through a whole pre-season and, and when the pandemic hit, we'll... We're just into the practice game, so, and we had a really, really strong and really challenging pre-season in 2020. Um, we were really happy with how we were going, um, and to have that come to a halt was um, was devastating. Really, I, I sort of didn't take it overly well, and then there was sort of half a chance that we we're going to get going again. So we started training in groups of ten, and then the virus just got worse. So it was a frustrating year, um, but I think what we found was. Guys are missing each other. Guys are missing that um, camaraderie that you get out of training and playing local footy. And, and we had a really good buy-in coming into this this preseason, which was great. So everyone's pretty excited, and hopefully the uh, the virus can stay away. So Adam, it's Neil here. Of the num of the players that were there for the preseason 2020, what percentage are back in 2021 at Inverley? Uh Pretty much 100. percent So we've we've kept pretty much everyone. The only, the only one I don't really know about is James Hybens at the moment. He's doesn't Well, no one knows much about James Hybens. So he's, he's hibernating, is he? <laughs> so I'll tell you that one in about March, but um, <laughs> pretty much everyone else we've, we've kept on board um, and added probably six or seven as well, probably about another six. So now, yeah, this numbers are good. Yeah, this time of year, all clubs around the region, uh, they're recruited well, they're up and about, they're training the house down, all that sort of stuff. But as far as the gossip around the traps go, for for the recruiting uh, mantle of number one around the region, I reckon you guys have it. Um, and a good part about it is that you're getting back uh, numbers that originally yours. So as far as the point system goes, it's it appears that you're, that you're going to have a much better looking squad and still very manageable points wise. Yeah, correct. It's, um, I mean, to get those one pointers back, when you have the pandemic, you probably go into the follow to the next year thinking you're probably not going to recruit anybody. And I've, I've stated previously that um, I think Jared Love was the only one really on our radar, and then somehow or another, Michael Best and. Um, Blake Hutchison, Dalton Grundle, all these names sort of come up and we started sort of talking to them and it was going to be not so much the points issue but more so the salary cap and there was we were lucky that with that cut, I think it was about 25%, every player took that on board and there was a handful of guys that offered to play for nothing, um, which I don't allow, that sort of minimum wage, but that was sort of how it unfolded and then and the guys coming back knew that, you know, it, it can't be about money, so that everyone's just bought in and, and to get those one pointers back really helps and, and luckily I think we had a, probably a five point reduction in 2019 from the guys that were points players that played in 2019 um, so that sort of helped us get um, a couple of points players in as well so yeah look I think most clubs are recruited really well and um, we can all sit here and, and debate who who's recruited the best but until you start playing and until it gets to the real stuff it's probably a bit unknown at this stage. So what what are the drivers for the one-pointers to come back? Is it wanting to be closer to family? Is it the fact they want to come back and do something special at their old footy club? What's the what's the go? Um, well, without speaking to them in detail, I think when I first come on board, I kept getting warned that Inverley were going to sort of fall off a cliff and some of those one-pointers left for a variety of reasons. You know, Hutchie, Hutchie moved on, Dalton went to the GFL, um, and a couple others went for other different reasons. And just because I, th- I think everyone thought they were going to go downhill, 
and because we had a pretty reasonable year in 2019 where um, we were probably predicted to not make finals and we, we made a, um, I think it was a semi and Werribee got us after the sign by a kick so we, we were kick away from a prelim. I think that surprised a few people and we recruited reasonably well in 2020, you know, Matt Tyquin and those guys and then when these guys all get together, I think in Hutchie's case he wanted to come back and he's really close with the Mules so he wanted to come back and play and Jared Love... Um, his best mates with our captain Jack Violet so he, he was looking for a change and um, maybe a step back as well and just to enjoy his footy and then once you sort of get those rumours and get a couple in the rest of them sort of go well hang on you know these guys are coming back and then it just panned out really well for us where everyone decided to end up coming back that we that we were trying to get back so variety of reasons they want to come back but Inverley haven't won a premiership for a long time um, and that's the main factor. Like, the guys just want to get a squad together um, and work hard together where they can get a premiership with Dana around their neck. Uh, Buck, uh, when you went to Inverley to coach, your, your footy skills and knowledge were, were not questioned and you're always going to be able to do that pretty well, I reckon. But what's impressing me about you is um, this this part, this recruiting, this negotiating, talking to players, selling the concept of what the club's about... Um, you've you've received great plaudits from the the management of the club committee members supporters, but but the playing group as well. Has that been a part of your coaching that you took a while to get into, or, or did did you did you launch straight into that uh, sort of management side as opposed to the actual footy? No, nah, it definitely took a bit. So I, I was very nerve wracking coming in in 2019 talking to players. I've never never ever done that. So um, I had. It was probably Brent Ling, a footy manager, who sort of helped me a bit in that regard. I had him, and then um, previously, like the last couple of years, De- um, Dion Miles has, has been really good for me. He's come in. I've, I've sort of we've both sort of taken the meetings, and, and I've learned a bit off him. And as a as a youngish coach, you just grow from that. You grow from the experience. The one thing when you're selling a club is you got to tell the truth. But like, we've had plenty of meetings where you go go to meetings, and and clubs will just sort of I tell you a couple of fibs here and there to make it sound good. We don't do that. We tell the truth. Um, if you like it, come. If you don't, then then don't come. So, um, and yeah, I think Inverley it's such a such a really good club that you don't really need to sell sell too much. I think guys, if they end up if they leave, they always end up coming back. A lot of them, um, you know, the the club's just got a really good vibe about it at the moment. And um, yeah, it's. it's it's sort of pretty easy when when you've got a really good group of group of guys and, and group of guys off field as well. Um, when you walk into a place like Inverley, it's so welcoming. So, um, makes my job a bit easier in that regard. Yeah, I, I can uh, definitely say that I have known you all of your life. That I was drinking your old man's free beer at the Winchelsea Hotel the day you were born or the day after. I can't remember which, but uh, so I have followed your life with interest, and I must say that it has surprised me with uh, the Adam Donahue that I knew through your teens and 20s that you have taken this on. So I think of all the plaudits that your footy career will have at the end of it, I reckon this is the one that impresses me the most, your uh, your ability to, to, I reckon, change into the person you needed to be. And, uh, yeah, you should give yourself a pat on the back for that because you're getting lots and lots of uh, praise coming out of that club for your work. Yeah, I appreciate it. Second, look, I, it, was a, it was a risk going into it, you know, I was, I went to Geelong Amateurs in 2018, I think it was, to to relax and sort of step away from GFL footy. And halfway through the year, I just had this coaching bug hit me, and um, it was a it was a scare sort of taking on the employee role. I didn't know how I was going to go, but I knew given given a bit of um, bit of a license to to half run my own show and, and do things my way, that I'd be able to help employee you know get to where they need to be. And, and we're not there yet, but. Um, we think as not only me but the coaches and the, and the management think that we're sort of set up at the moment where we can hopefully be thereabouts for the next few years and, and hopefully we can keep building our juniors up and, and stay around the mark for a long time to come. Yeah, they, Sorry? Go, no, I was going to say because we're getting close towards the end of our time. Um, in terms of uh, Inverley will obviously make the grand final in the GDFL this year, we have to say that. Who are the two teams that you expect to be playing off in the preliminary final for the right to play you? Oh, first, I don't, I'm not going to lock any of that in, I think. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was just building you up a bit. I honestly think there's there's a good nine teams that can make finals. I think there's going to be four four or five teams that will be very stiff. I, 
the pressure is going to be on this year. I think the recruiting has been enormous throughout the whole league. Every club's recruited really well. So I can't really put a finger on who they would be. Um, if I said two two teams, then I'd, the other six might crack it and, and I'll be doing them a disrespect. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um, fair to say... Just, yeah. I might chuck into the ring that uh, you were defeated in the preliminary final by Werribee, and, and it's pretty clear that the young side they had that day, um, to, to me, they look like uh, their natural improvers. Apparently, they've recruited a couple of quite good players. So this is the thing about your side. You know how well it's going. It's re- improved maybe 10%. But you, you correctly pointed out, there's at least six or seven other clubs that are going to improve 10% as well. So it's going to be a red-hot competition for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've touched on Werribee. They're young, they're quick. Um, by all reports, they've kept everyone. Race Prismal comes on board. so And you, you never really hear about Werribee, and, and generally they're probably a five or six better goal team up there. Yeah, Thompson's the one, probably the one that is um, coming to mind at the moment, just the, the sort of quality of guys we've got in. Brent McLeod, Andrew Jarvis, Jada Anderson. Um, probably lost a couple, but they're looking really, really strong. Um you know, Bunningburn won the flag 2019, so um, if you didn't say them, you'd be doing them disrespect. Correct. Winter got good recruits, you know, East Geelong, North Geelong, Geelong West, Geelong West are flying extremely under the radar. Yep, yep. Um, heard they got Jimmy Jimmy Linton, I don't know if that's true or not, but um, he's a star, so yeah, what we're going to find is the competition is going to be a hell of a lot better than 2019, and I think all teams are going to improve from, from that year. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, we've wound up two blokes chatting today. We'll be talking to you, no doubt, through the winter as the Geelong and District Footy League and the Pulse radio station will continue to have the great relationship that they currently have. Thanks, Nick. Are you still there, Nick? Yeah, I yeah, am. still here. Yeah, just uh, uh, Robbie Logue just told me to give him a shout-out, so shout-out to Nobber Logue. Good on you, Nobber. Welcome to two blokes chatting. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Cheers, guys. Adam Donahue uh, from the Inverleaf Footy Club.